Hi guys, Thomas and Friends 47 here, and today we're taking a look at the new Thomas and Friends Trains and Cranes Super Tower. And boy, is this thing super. So, this box is absolutely huge. I want to give a shout out to my brother for finding this item at my local Walmart store. The box really is amazing, and there were several people on Twitter who actually sent me pictures of this box in Walmart store, so I want to give a shout out to them, so thank you so much. Um, but all in all, it's very, very cool. I like how the packaging here shows how fun this item looks, and there's also this huge promo of Cranky on the side, which I think is a nice touch. Alrighty, there's the barcode there with Thomas. Some information there about the item. Here's the other side. And then finally the other panel. It's confusing to figure out which side is the front and side, which side is the back on these boxes. Alright, included in the box is the standard Trackmaster Thomas, which it's alright, but it's nothing, you know, nothing special. There's nothing here that differentiates it from any other classic Trackmaster 2 Thomas. Also included is this Percy push-along model. Again, a classic model, except mine had this bent coupling on the front out of the packaging. I don't like that. Here's the other side. The back the top of the model, and then of course the bottom, and it does have his name written on the bottom. And then there's this standard truck, and I'm glad it's not some specialized truck with a special piece on top. It's just a truck that I can add into my collection. I do like that. Though I wish I had a face. And here are the four crates that are included, but these crates are hollow on the bottom. They are not solid pieces of plastic, and they're made of a soft rubbery material. And then here is Harold. So Harold is just basically a basic model. There's nothing really special about him. Um, they did put both red lights instead of red and green light, which I thought was interesting. Here's the uh, uh, top and then the bottom, and you'll actually see there's a little hook there that comes out to pick up the packages, so you can actually fly those around, which I thought was interesting. Alright, so that's all of the train characters included. Let's take a look next at the cranes. First up is Carly, and I was really excited to finally get Carly in Trackmaster 2. I think she looks great here, though I wish they would have given her the base that Cassia had. I don't understand why they, why they decided to make a new base just for the set. Um, all in all, though, it's not bad. It has some good printing. I like the window printing detail, her name printing detail, and it has a lot of mobility, as you can see here. Um, though the hook is a little bit stiff, so it's hard to get it to move up and down. Alright, and then here is, like I was talking about, with that window printing. Looks very, very nice. I like that. Here's the back of uh, Carly. Here's the other side, and then the front. Good face, but it's the same as Cassia, so there's no differential between that. I can't remember if they had the same face in the show or not. I think they did. And then here's Cassia. Here's the better look at that stand, and it's the same on both uh, Cassia and Carly. You can see it's smaller at the bottom, which, like I said, I wish they wouldn't have done. I wish they would have stuck with the older design from the other set. She has the same points of mobility as Carly. Very cool. Alright, and then this is the tower all completed and built. It took me an hour to put this thing together, uh, which really surprised me. It's also a very heavy set, and it's a very large set. Not only is it tall, but it's very wide. You can see it's just barely fitting on my table. It's even overhanging a little bit. The first destination on this set is Tidmouth Sheds, and it has a nice, uh, a nice turntable here. It has nice brickwork around it. All in all, I do like this design. I think it looks okay. Um, it cannot fit the older Trackmaster 2, or excuse me, Trackmaster... Uh, tender engines, it will fit Trackmaster 2 Tender engines. Um, just keep that in mind. Alright, you'll see there's a little crate detail there. Alright, and then as for the sheds themselves, they look okay. Um, this isn't my favorite version of them, to be quite honest. It's mainly because of the walls. You'll see it has the thin windows and the larger windows. I believe this is the same mold from the Superstation. I kind of wish they would have used the push along sheds, or at least that outer wall, because it's so much better detailed. Um, it's a little bit disappointing that a set for this price doesn't have as much detail as a $10 item. The inside of the sheds has some good details though, including buffer stops uh, on two of the tracks. There's also little tools laying around, which makes it look like a real place. I thought that was interesting. And then on the top you can see the roof here. I don't really like the Thomas & Friends sticker. Uh, to be honest, if I was going to get it to use on my layout, I probably wouldn't add that sticker. Alright, and then speaking of the other destinations and stickers, you can see the Vickerstown Diesel Works here with Diesel. Up above that is the Sodor Search and Rescue Center with Flynn. And then Marin Station, which they did a weird choice here. It actually shown like the, the train track and then the windmill in the background instead of the station. I guess it's because it's supposed to be looking out over the platform. And then above that is the Sodor Steamworks, and it's so desperately calling out for Victor and Kevin here. Like, why couldn't you at least put one of them there? It just looks a bit weird. As for the top, we can finally see Cranky on the top, and he has some good details there. And he runs from about midway all the way up. Um, he has like uh, Stuart the seagull on one side and there's another seagull on the other, which is a nice touch, but it's just kind of plain. Um, on the other side is Cassia on the dock side here. 
and there's a little cargo chute there to drop packages and then Carly is on the other side and I really wish they would have included Big Mickey here I think that's something they they could have added all right and then Cranky is holding on to this and this is just the cart that spins Thomas around we'll take a better look at that in just a second all in all though it's it's a little bit strange all right so let's say let's start running with this set so you can see that Thomas here has his freight car. We're going to start him on the way up the hill. And we start him at the at the turntable there, and he just goes up the tracks. He passes through one of these little flags there, and there's two of those, one on each side of the tracks. And then when he comes up the track, he comes up on every on every level there, and you'll see that. It actually looks pretty cool. And then there's this automatic stop track. And so when Thomas stops there, Acacia can pick up that cargo that's in his freight cars, and they modify their hook, um, hooks a little bit so they can actually pick those up, and then you drop that into the cargo chute below. And then it comes out at the bottom, which I thought was a nice touch. Alright, then you can take and load the next cargo and put it back into the truck, so that, he, that way he can take it on his merry way. Alright, so then you start Thomas again, and now it's time for Cranky to do his part. So you take and move the handle, and the entire thing moves and spins. And this is actually pretty cool. Alright, then he comes to Carly, and then you send him on his way. And basically that's the set. But I have a few problems with this, and the reason I do is it's, a, it's always a manual reset. Meaning you can't run Thomas on a loop on this without going up and spinning Cranky around. And even if you could, like even if Cranky was an automatic reset, you would still have to take and stop the automatic tracks over and over again. And I don't like that. I wish there was a way to set this up where you could put the track in and just have Thomas go up and down because then this would be such a cool display piece. Like it's it's begging to be displayed, but it also hinders itself from being able to be displayed. I also feel it's a little bit boring which is why I decided to add the talking engines. Um, you can see here in this video that I added the talking engines a little bit and it, um, ran them on the set, and they do so much better on the set. Because of the automatic stop tracks, it automatically triggers them, and so they're talking to each other and talking about jobs that they're doing. And I think even if they had included just one of the talking engines in this set, because they already have the stop tracks for them, I think it would have made a little bit more sense and worked a little bit better. Um, but you can hear some of the talk engines talking here. All in all, as for final points of this set, it's actually a good set and it's a great idea. It's just, unfortunately, like many of other Mattel's decisions, it's really poor execution. Like, it seems great on paper, but it ends up feeling more of like a Hot Wheels garage than it does a Thomas and Friends playset. And, you know, Cranky is a nice destination, Tidmouth Sheds is a nice destination, but all in all, they're so mashed in together, you can't really use them, and it just ends up being kind of a mess. And like I said, that, you know, manual reset on everything is going to get frustrating over time. Though I do think that kids would have fun with this set, I just don't know if they would get tired of it easily. Um, for example, the other thing is, is the price. You know, this item costs $100. That is a lot of money, even for me, on a Trackmaster Thomas and Friends set. And if we compare the stats of this set to others, you know, this set includes a plain Trackmaster Thomas, a plain Trackmaster truck, and a plain push-along Percy. Um, it also includes a plain Herald. If we take a look at a set that's half of this price, the interactive Talking Thomas and Percy set, um, that set included two talking Thomas and Friends engines that recognize each other. That included Bullstro, that included two troublesome trucks, not to mention destinations such as the bridge and Henry's Tunnel, and had a great um, area for expansion. That set was only $50. And if you wanted to compare a set of the same price point of the Deluxe Sodor set, for example, which was $100, um, some places had it for $130. And that set, you were getting tons of engines. I believe it was five push-along engines may have been more than that. You had two Talk Thomas, or one Talk Thomas, one Talk Percy engine. You had four trucks. I mean, it, the value there just isn't here in this set. And I don't know what it is. I, it looks great. I thought it would be really cool, but eh, I just don't know if that $100 price point is exactly where, where it should be. And like I said, it's a good idea. I just don't think it works in person. But that's my Right, but real fast, I want to rate this set, so out of 10 stars, I'm going to have to give it a 3, just because out of the past sets that we've had, and out of the things that, you know, with these talking engines, I guess it kind of spoiled me, Mattel 
I know they can do better, and I've seen that they've done better, especially last year with the Talking Thomas and Percy set, the Talking Deluxe set. Those sets were amazing, and to have a set that's roughly in the same price point but fall flat so hard is just a little bit disappointing. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now!